quest. Fuck ah! it, finally. Jesus wow. Christ. What the hell? This is like trying it's to get into Fort days. Knox. Holy <laughs> shit. Third time lucky. I don't know. Maybe fifth time. I don't know. Yeah. Fuck's sake. It's a nightmare. What a pain it's in all, the ass that was. Whole experience. Whole experience has been a fucking nightmare so far. <laughs> <laughs> the rest has got to be all downhill, right? It has to be. <laughs> no, no, the fun ha the fun is going to begin now. Let the fun begin. Let the real fun begin. So, Tony, Tony, thank you for being my very first Instagram live guest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by default. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the first person that was the hardest to actually <laughs> get onto a live. Oh my God, what a nightmare. We're he we're here now. So there's no looking. Back. We're here now. So my first question is, how did you get banned from Facebook? <laughs> um, I it was my third suspension. The first suspension, uh, I wrote "fucking white people" uh, because somebody told me to melt cheese. Told me to melt cheese on something, and I said "fucking white people." It was not a political debate, and then. Uh, and then I got back on after two days of being suspended and I totally forgot that I'd been suspended and I wrote fucking white people again. And uh, <laughs> I got suspended for seven days that time. And then the, the last time, it was after this Blue Monday in January and, and a British friend of mine wrote, uh, actually that's a, a British travel company invented Blue Monday. It's not actually a thing. It's not an actual thing. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be the saddest day of the year, and that's uh, right. Yeah, and I wrote all British people suck, and uh, I got which is days true. And I'm half British. You got, 30, you got banned white. for thirty days for basically <laughs> for basically <laughs> telling the truth. So first of all, fucking white people, because that's true. Just fucking <laughs> white people, man. That is the answer to a lot of the problems that we have in this world. Is fucking all, white people all of the problems? Yeah. All of the problems. And and then that British people suck, which I know is true from experience. I, I am yeah. one. So anyway. <laughs> have a long history of Why something. do you think I fucking, why did I leave Britain in the first place? I came to live here so I didn't have to be surrounded know. by other British people. Anyway. <laughs> so Tony, I am, I'm so <coughs> glad that I finally, I finally got to, <coughs> to speak to you before uh, you die from a coughing fit. Yeah. And, um, so I'll introduce you to yeah. to those people who have never heard of you, which I, I think there's probably about uh, 11 of them out there. So Tony is a well-accomplished actor. He's a writer. He's a producer that was born and raised in Scarberia, which to those uh, uninitiated it should know that is Scarborough in Ontario. That's next door to Toronto. And uh, and you graduated from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York. And yep. That's right. since then you've appeared you've appeared in like Hollywood movies, loads of independent films, uh yep. countless episodes of television, including one of my favorites, uh, which is the amazing Baroness von Sketch Show. Yeah. And You've also, you've been nominated for several screen awards. So, yeah. man, you're like, you're like that's big 30, leagues pretty much. Yeah? That, that, that's 30 years. That's 30 years. And, uh, and in terms of nobody knowing me, it's Canada. So nobody fucking knows me. There's probably 11 people who do know me. Um, right. But uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a good, it's been a good, it's been a good career. It's been a good, you know, it just started slow. It's, it's gotten steadily uh stronger as i gone along and you know i was never a, a young cute guy so i had to grow into my i don't know i've seen some of your old, photographs old guys. i've seen some of your earlier photographs you, you look pretty cute in those yeah compared to how i look now but not compared to cute guys <laughs> none of us are none of us are getting any younger so <laughs> So uh, how old were you? Like, how far back does this go? Like, how old were you when you found out that you wanted to be an actor when you grew up? Uh, well, I didn't. I didn't really know that. I, 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 uh, I was, I was st at U of T in Scarborough studying to be an English teacher, and uh, I took drama as a minor because I figured I'd meet some girls and it'd be easy. 
And, uh, and I'd always been interested in movies and plays and books. And, you know, I grew up in Scarborough where we drank and fought and played hockey and, you know, did shit like that. But secretly I was this little art artsy nerd. And, uh, and when I got to university, none of my friends went to university with me. They all went on to other paths. So I could start over and be another person or, or be the person I actually was or, or begin to begin to become the person I actually was. And, um, mm -hmm. and I had this teacher there, Catherine Smith, and I had done a little play and she called me into her office one day and she said, what are you going to do with your life? And I said, uh, I'm going to teach. And she said, what about acting? She said, I said, I really like it. It's fun. And she said, I'm going to tell you something I've only ever told one other person, which is that if you study this, you could probably make a living doing this for the rest of your life. And, and she suggested I go to this school in New York where this other person she had recommended do this go. So I called that other person. We had a conversation. And at the end of the conversation, I decided to drop out of university and move to New York and go to acting school. And that other person is fucking Enrico Colantoni, uh, who's I worked with on Bad Blood, and he was a lead on Flashpoint, and he's in that Tom Hanks, Mr. Rogers movie. And, and he's a good friend now, too. But this random fucking connection from 35 years ago and one conversation changed uh, the path of my life. I don't think I probably ever would have pursued it unless somebody gave me permission to. Because where I'm wow. from, you know, I grew, up, I grew up dirt poor in Scarborough, and who the fuck was I to become an actor, you know? Uh, it just wasn't a thing I seriously considered or, or something I, anybody I had ever known had ever done. So, so I'm eternally grateful to uh, Kathy Smith and to Enrico for having that conversation with me and... Uh, and the rest is a uh, slow and painful history lesson. <laughs> <laughs> like day by day, this, the history lesson goes on. Every and fucking so, day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Mrs. Smith is the one that, uh, that you owe a lot to, I guess, really, yeah, for kind of yeah. like huh. leading you yeah. away. Yeah. Like I said, I, might, I, I, may, I may have stumbled into it some other way, but she, she made it real clear. And, and you know, I was like, yeah, I was a smart kid and I did really well at school and I, I probably could have been a doctor or a lawyer. I had great grades and all that kind of shit, but uh, nothing ever pulled me that way. And, uh, and I guess because I grew up without money, you know, my, my parents wanted me to just like have a job that paid well and have mm -hmm. a nice life. And, uh, and so I pick acting, which is the stupidest fucking thing anybody could ever <laughs> do. Uh, but it worked out, you know, more or less. Cool. Um, someone called That Rockin' Chick said, Tony is wicked awesome. Um, I don't she's know if you right. know her by that. She's right. Yeah. She's right. She, yeah. <laughs> she's right. She's got that right. And she says, uh, that was a great story. Um, and <laughs> someone called I Am Daniel Malik, so I'm guessing this is someone called Daniel, Daniel Malik, oh, yeah. says, always, yeah. always a, a warm feeling seeing you. Now, I don't know <laughs> whether that's because he's, maybe he's wet himself. <laughs> you possibly, see, I don't know. Maybe you you got to see the, on people? the abs on that guy are ridiculous. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's wet himself now that he's seen you, either out of excitement or fear. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, so since you, since uh, Mrs. Smith started you off, you've uh, you've been in a load of stuff playing, titty. like you say, titty. it's like, pretty. Yeah, like playing mainly thugs gangsters cops all the same really and yeah, but then you know, a the few beginning. other and then okay. a few other things that are kind of like really kind of go against the grain like for example um and i, I did have some clips lined up to show but because this is instagram is it's sure. all kind of a little bit backward on here i thought you can't see you can't show clips on here but there was a clip i was going to show from stag in which you play a character uh, called paul and in that, uh, he stag, sorry, Paul kisses his buddy Henry. Like they, there's this long sort of talk, and it, it, at one point you think he's gonna he's gonna punch him, right? He's like, what the fuck? He says, hey, yeah. fuck you. Like this nerdy guy says, hey, fuck you. He's like, what yeah. do you mean, fuck you? What are you talking about? And then it's like, 
And then at the end, they're like, well, you know, all the guys was thinking that you were kind of a bit, you know, what do you mean, you know? And it's like, I'm playing out the whole scene now, you realize. And yeah, it's like, well, what do we you mean, you know? Clips. And it's like, and then they just, like, they start snogging. Like, they yeah. get into it. And yeah. like, whoa, yeah. holy yeah. shit. So, <laughs> so there's a few yeah. things like that. And there's another one yeah. where you play, uh, uh, you're, you're credited as, uh, was it weird? Got strange man. So you're credited as Strange Man in, yeah. in an episode in LA Complex, where yeah. basically, and this stuff that is out there. It's on. It, if you guys want to see this, it's on YouTube. Like I could post this down here later. It's fucking brilliant. You have to see this. So the guy that you're playing is like, he's wearing these like shorts. He looks kind of seedy, and he's he's hired a guy to come and and dust off his garage or something, right? So the guy is like, he's dusted it off. He's like, okay, so I've done it. It's nice and clean. And then, uh, so uh, thanks for the money. And he's about to go. And you're like, hey, wait, I need to inspect it. <laughs> and then you start <laughs> trashing the place. That was yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. So tell me a little yeah. bit more about your, you know, those kind of scenes that you get into. Because obviously, it's obvious that you love those. Yeah, I like, you know, I just like acting. Um if a, if a scene calls for some shit like that, you know, I'm not, I've never been a shy guy. I don't feel, you know, I don't have a filter. I'm not, I don't feel awkward pulling my pants down or, or whatever, you know. I used to juggle my balls at a party. That was my party trick. <laughs> I would take my testicles out and I would, and I would juggle them with my fingers. And I would sing, do, 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 while I did it. Uh, and, I was usually and very. That, and I understand that um, you've never been invited back to Buckingham Palace ever since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <fuck laughs> and um, I think the reason why I think the reason why is because I think the Queen's husband that was his body <laughs> trick before. Maybe so. Maybe, yeah. You can't do that now. Like, mowing, he's really mowing jealous. Mowing his lawn. Mowing his lawn. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, so, I just like, I like to make people laugh. And uh, and I play a lot of heavy guys and serious guys, or I have. Uh, I definitely grew up doing that because that's what I looked like. And, uh, you know, they were smaller parts. I was a guy who carried a gun and stood be, you know, over time, I'd become closer to the middle gangster. You know, it was like the guy on the end <laughs> and then this right-hand man. And now I'm, you know, I'm entering my the the age where I'm going to be the the lead gangster. Um, but uh, but it's so it's fun to do anything different. You know, I played a couple of gay characters now, and uh, and that film Stag is amazing because I'm the most homophobic character the entire film, uh, and and everybody's concerned that Jefferson Brown's character is probably gay because he's so sensitive and stuff. But we're best friends. Mm -hmm. And then there's just this moment where these two guys are, have loved each other and they've always loved each other. And, uh, and, they, uh, and they make out. They just make out in the middle of this argument. And uh, it's funny because, you know, I've known Jefferson for a while and we, we had done another movie at least. Uh, yeah, we've done one before that. We've done stuff since. Um, and, you know, he's, he's, a straight, he's as straight and narrow as there is. And... Uh, and we're just like, okay, well, I guess we're going to do it. So uh, it's actually a really good scene. We worked on that scene quite a bit. And Brett Hurd uh, directed it and let us, uh, let us do what we wanted to do. And then it was just like, there's no other way to make out with someone than to make out. So we just made sure we both had gum and uh, our breath was fresh. <laughs> and, uh, we made out for fucking hours we made out in, uh, <laughs> in, an, in a, some alley in, in the freezing cold. I mean, at, at, least, uh, at least we kept each other warm. But, uh, yeah, it was fine. You know, it's, uh, it's no big deal. I mean, I, don't have, I didn't have any issues doing it. He didn't have any issues doing it. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, and, uh, and he's not a bad kisser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe you picked up some tips from that as well right so like yeah periods. yeah yeah he does, so. does this thing with his tongue that was amazing <laughs> is it can you do that thing with a cherry stalk that's Not the that's, <laughs> <laughs> i ruined them so what I kind of them. like is yeah you ruined him that's it he's done now so yeah. are there is there like any kind of character that you haven't played that you would like to play in the future you know, I just, 
I mean, the more I, I, I never really look at anyone as a character. That's the thing. I just I kind of just try to find me in it. Uh, so the closer mm -hmm. it is to me, the more I, I can bring to it, you know, so I'm, I'm really, uh, uh, you know, I've played a couple of dads now, but I look forward to playing more fathers and and uh, I like blue collar guys. You know, I love cops and robbers too. That's fun. You know, mm -hmm. that's a lot of fun, and and I've done quite a bit of that. And trying to bring variation to it, and trying to and trying to not distinguish each character. Mm -hmm. You know, like to make a point of it, but mm -hmm. but you know, some guys, uh, you know, just to try and find where they, uh, what their core is, and where they operate from, and yeah. and and just get inside of it, and then and find a find a freedom uh, to 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 bring you know, as many dimensions to whatever is possible. You know, even that fucking guy in the garage, you got to figure out mm -hmm. who is this guy? What's he doing? You know, why is he tearing his garage apart? And, uh, you know, he's just some odd repressed fucking weirdo, <laughs> mm -hmm. but he's got to be specific. He's got to be specific or, or it's not interesting. You know, it's, it's got to be clean. That's the thing I really admire in other actors right now. Uh, uh, or, or, or I'm really noticing that I admire more is is when something is really crystal clear and and you understand these guys. I've been watching a lot of Peaky Blinders, which I never saw before. Mm. And, I love uh, that show. Yeah, yeah. That lead guy, what's his name, Murphy Cillian Cillian Murphy or something like. That. I don't know how to say any words, uh, but uh, he doesn't have to say fuck all. The guy who plays, yeah, the guy who plays Tommy, uh, Tommy the uh, the lead character. Thomas it's Shelby, um, yeah. Yeah, Tommy Shelby, uh, played by uh, Killian Murphy. Killian, yeah. okay, I, I don't know how to say it. Um, but he doesn't have to say anything, you know, at a certain point, because he's so clear in everything he does. You start to understand what his thoughts are, you know. You, mm. you start to understand, and then, and then he can surprise you within that uh, realm. It's, it's really awesome. I, I, you know, I find film acting... Uh, I like to get rid of as many words as I can. Uh, I find it's such a visual medium that it's uh, that it's really it's really great when you're not explaining to the audience what you're doing and you're just doing it mm. and and give the, giving them the credit and 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 uh, and somehow they are they're a part of it. They're more of a part of it that way, more of a less of an observer and more of a participant. So when you say you like to get through with as a few, as few words as possible. Surely you're, you know, you're, <clears throat> I don't think indebted is the right word, but you're kind of, you're bound by what's in the script, right? I mean, I guess. To, to whatever degree, I, much, to whatever degree. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people like work, a lot of people like working with me because I change the script all the time. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I won't even ask. I'll just change it. And, uh, or, or, or we'll have a meeting and, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have a, a little, uh, a huddle and say, okay, let's not say this. Let's say that. Let's not, uh, you know, just to, just to make the scenes better. You know, you're always trying mm -hmm. right up to the last second until you shoot it, you can still make it better. Uh, and, and sometimes it's not that it's bad writing. It's just not, it just doesn't feel right for me. You know, another actor right. yeah. might be better with those words or, you know, it just depends. Um, and sometimes they insist, like, no, we need this. And I'm like, okay, whatever you need. Uh, I'm just always trying to find how I can make it as authentic as possible. And, mm -hmm. and often more in television than film, uh, they write too much, you know, because they need, they need, if somebody's tuning into the show halfway through, they need to keep catching them up, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so like yeah. every fucking commercial break, they keep adding the same information into those chunks, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just like it is with a, a, a presentation it, or something. When you're giving a presentation, you need to I kind guess, of re yeah. recap what you've been, what you've been saying. I guess the same in a in a show. Um, I've got a question from someone called a Ava. I don't know if this is correct. Ava or Ava or Rico. Um, she asks, oh, yeah. "What advice would you give to others that want to pursue an acting career?" Uh, I always tell people first take classes, you know, take some kind of class and find out if you can fucking do it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how many people tell me, I think I'd be really good at this. I think I, I you know, mm -hmm. I've always thought I'd be good at it. Like how the fuck did you think that? You know, 
I always be good at brain surgery. Yeah. Well, you have to open a fucking head up and figure it out. Um, but, and that's not to say they're wrong, but that's to say, you, how the fuck do you know unless you do it? You know, unless you've gotten up on a stage yeah. or unless you've stood in front of a camera, you don't have a clue what it's like. Um, so get, you know, take a class. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. Uh, just take a class. That's the first step. Take a class mm -hmm. um, or, you know, go, there's all kinds of, I'm sure, community theaters or student mm -hmm. films, you know, that's in the beginning. That's what I was looking for. Anybody who was making a student film, I was there. Uh, Non-union well, films. This is a pay. perfect plug. This moment now is perfect plug to say that you provide acting classes. Is that right? Like coaching? Yeah. I, I mean, uh, yeah, I do. I, I teach uh, audition classes, but I, I don't want to do it online. I don't, I don't, I'm right. got no interest in that. Uh, and I, I do some coaching for mostly it's auditions that I, that I teach and coach. Uh, I'm right. really good at auditioning. Uh, I, I'm, I'm good at acting, but auditioning is a kind of a different, you know, it's, there's a, there's, a, there's more to it than just acting. Uh, right. And, uh, and I'll, I'll coach a few people, but I'll, I really only coach people, I really want to coach, you know, I don't, I don't want to do it for money. I do do it for money, but I don't want to just mm -hmm. take people's money. If I think I can't help them, it's like go, go somewhere else. Uh, really, I'm not, I, I don't have enough time. I like actors. I love actors. I love good actors. If I feel like it can help someone get better at something, that's a great, great feeling. And, and I don't, I charge relatively, I charge the lowest amount that anyone charges to do that kind of stuff. I just really like doing it. Um, but I like doing it with someone, you know, I like it. I like it when it works, <laughs> you know, if it doesn't right. work, I hate it. Uh, but yeah, so to whatever degree a plug, but I do these workshops whenever this pandemic's over, because I like to be in the room with the person, you know, especially people mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I'd rather be there and, 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 uh, I don't know. I, I'm not crazy about Zoom shit. I mean, it took us three fucking tries to get this thing happening, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's frustrating. That's true. Yeah, but, it's... I, but I have a few I have a few people that I work with and if if anyone's interested, you can approach me and no one's ever had a uh, no one's ever uh, been anything but uh, uh uh it's all it's always worked out. Um I think I'm good at it, but I but I'm really selective about who who I work with. Excellent. I, well, that's great. I mean, yeah. doing something, doing something that you you love, and being able to pass on that knowledge as well um, with the people that that pretty much you handpick yeah. and say, okay, I can work with this person. That that's how it. That's a perfect life, really. That that's fantastic. Uh, by the way, uh, well, real know, so Peta I, Nero I mean, so says you, not... you look good. So real Peta <laughs> Nero says uh, um, you're, you're looking good. Um, I, maybe he's one of your uh, napoholics, right? They're all they're all napoholics. They gotta be. They're all napoholics. Um, it's just that not everybody has yeah. the hats. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, you've you've done you've done a lot of different characters, and uh, as yeah. personally as a dialect coach, it would be remiss of me not to ask you about accents. Now. Um, yeah. Now the thing is, like I've I've seen one of the one of the things where you played uh, an Italian gentleman, and yeah. I, I that that accent was sounded pretty good to me. Um, it was what is hard. your was yeah? Hard. What's your process? Uh, well, they offered me that movie. I didn't even audition, uh, and uh, and I said I am not Italian. I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I think I think you want an Italian guy to do it, and they said no, no, no. You'll be okay. And uh, I didn't have I didn't have a ton of dialogue in the movie, but, but it was, but most of it was in Italian. So most of it was actually in okay. Italian, in in the language. Most of it was in Italian. So I had somebody work with me phonetically, and I and I drilled it and drilled it and drilled it. Um, awesome. You know, I don't want to play an Italian and do a shit job. I was just watching Adrian Brody on. Uh, on Peaky Blinders, and he's fucking terrible as an Italian. I mean, he's a great actor, <laughs> uh, but it was terrible. It's just fucking terrible. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, and, uh, I've got, I I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Tony, but I've got to say yeah. there, like with Peaky Blinders, 
almost all of the freaking actors on there get a lot of flack for their Birmingham accent. And I can tell you, being a, a, a guy who grew up, man and boy, in Birmingham, I can yeah. tell you that most of those actors, Killian does a very good job of it, but the rest yeah. of them, it goes between a little bit dodgy to right. pretty fucking shit. And sure. the Birmingham accent is difficult to do. So, sure. yeah. I wouldn't fuck so he fit, I, I guess know. he fit it in pretty well. So, um, yeah. but I understand they all um, had dialect coaches yeah, on that so show anyway. So have you ever used the dialect coach or you, you do the process uh, solo? There's been a couple of things where there was a coach. Um, I did this thing last year. I probably can't talk about it. It was for Netflix. It hasn't come on yet. But uh, okay. I was British in that. I didn't have a ton of dialogue, but there was a coach there because there was a lot of different people there. Occasionally there's a coach, but mm. but more often than not, no. And, you know, when I was young, nobody gave a shit about anything. You know, I'd, I'd play Spanish yeah. guys and, and Mexican guys. And uh, I played a, I played a, a Muslim terrorist. <laughs> you know, like as, as long as you weren't white, white, they just cast you as everything. Uh, one time I went in for an audition and the guy's like, can you do like an Eastern European accent? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. What does that sound like? And he goes, I don't know. Just yeah. fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, oh my it's god like, yeah, it's like it's the like, wild west yeah you would you would just go do 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 anything <laughs> and they're like yeah that sounds good that sounds not from here and that was it um now, and can i ask course, you have you ever worked with juan carlos have you worked with juan carlos velis yeah yeah I, I mean i don't know if we've actually worked together but i know him super well what the way i met yeah. him was he asked me to do this play that he wrote 25, 30 years ago. I don't remember. Uh, so that's how I met him. We didn't end up doing it, but uh, he did. I went and saw him. He was excellent. And uh, yeah, he's just a good guy and a good, a really good actor. And now his daughter's yeah. uh, in this new Viggo Mortensen film. Yeah, that's and, uh, right. She's in that show with, um, yeah. I forget the name, but yeah, it's some pretty big actors in that. That's amazing yeah. that she, yeah, she's yeah. in that. That's fantastic. Yeah. The reason she's, I asked she's, about Juan Carlos. She's, she's bigger than both of us. <laughs> the reason I asked about Juan Carlos uh, is because you mentioned that you'd been in, you'd been given roles that were like, you know, Mexican guys, terrorists, you know, Middle Eastern terrorists, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it, I had yeah. like a deja vu because anything, I interviewed anything. him uh, last year and he yeah. said he, he used to get all those parts as well up to a point. So we are having some uh, internet issues again here. So, yeah, I guess those yeah. kinds of things, they say like, well, you know, you look kind of like a bit swarthy, yeah, it's, it's you a, know, you're tough guy. Yeah, because people are trying to call me on my fucking phone, that's why. <laughs> right. I think we're back. I think we're back in sync. Yeah, yeah. It's just not white. You know, whoever wasn't white um, or or black, yeah. <laughs> You know, it was all the other. Right. It was just the other. It was just the there's, other. There's a lot of... Still there? Yeah, I mean, there's still... I'm yeah, I'm still you. here. I'm still here. Oh, yeah, don't worry. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. If I do disappear, then it's probably because I've got this thing on my phone okay. that... Um, it, it like every five minutes it comes up yeah. and says, oh, we're going to kick you out of uh, Instagram because you said that you, you want to... Oh, here we go. Wait until... 3358. There you go. I've got this little app that kicks you out of your um, uh, your your media stuff, right? So you can concentrate okay. and stuff. But it's plaguing me. Okay. So like when I'm doing something like this, I forget to turn the fucking thing off. <laughs> and it's like, hey, you, we're going to turn you off in a minute, okay? I'm like, no! Yeah, I'm in the middle of an interview with Tony just, Napo! This is the first time I've managed to do <laughs> this! I just, uh, I just got a call from... I. I I got a call from my agent just now. I had to not answer. So hopefully he's not watching. <laughs> you turned down your agent for me. Awesome. That's cool. Uh, uh, I lost you again. Oh, there you are. Yeah. This fucking This thing. is going to keep happening. This is just, it's the way of the new world. This is yeah. the new world order now. Yeah. We're going to keep dropping out of sync and um, stuff. That's <laughs> yeah. how it happens. Uh, right. So yeah, I think it's, sorry. I think the it's the question way, I asked uh, for us, we should just figure out we just shouldn't be talking to each other. I know the gods are frowning upon it. 
But hey, we're we're here now. We're here now. So you know, it's so um have you how have you I mean obviously all this stuff this is enough to set, drive podcast. people crazy, but how have you been staying yeah. sane during lockdown? And I mean if you are staying sane, like and if so, how? Staying sane, uh, one day at a time. <laughs> Just one day at a time. You know, I try and I try and. Uh, thankfully, I have shit to do. You know, I'm shooting a show right now. I can't talk about. Mm -hmm. um, I paint houses when I have nothing to do. Uh, I coach once in a while. I have a small, small bubble of friends that uh, I, I'll spend some time with. My daughter's been away. I have a 16 year old daughter, Ella Ray who's been in Newfoundland since Christmas and she's coming home just in time to spend next weekend with me. Cause my 53rd birthday awesome. is uh, a week from Monday. Um, oh, cool. so we're going to spend the weekend together, uh, right before my birthday. Um, but yeah, I moved into a new apartment. I, I, I made a little home, a little home during this time. Uh, I've, I've really focused on a lot of, uh, you know, I'm an addict and shit. So I'm focused on like stuff that I've been avoiding for years. Technical shit. Um, and my phone's going to die. Soon. But um, yeah, just working on like my mental health and, and solidifying recovery stuff and uh, uh, start, starting, starting a new home and, you know, just to, just trying to like, you know, I know it's when you're out of work and I know people are getting uh, stir crazy and depressed and stuff, but my adult life, um, I mean, I've had partners, but, uh, but essentially I've, I've been on my own since, uh, you know, my marriage ended 20 years ago. Uh, so I like being alone. I like my alone time. Uh, but I, I like people too, and it'll be nice to see people again. But, uh, but for the most part, I'm, I'm just good watching TV. <laughs> I've been cooking a lot of soups. It's about, That's it's about thing. getting the balance. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've become a bit of a, a bit of a master chef. I make a killer lentil soup that Marvin. You make a killer yeah, what? You know, just life. Life is, this is life. This, you know, everyone hmm. soup. I make a lentil soup that'll knock your fucking oh. underwear down. Does it have plenty, <laughs> plenty of garlic in there? Tons. Tons of garlic. Uh, <laughs> it, and it's, he made it, it, it. Marvin K taught me to do it with a, uh, uh, a bacon base. First you make bacon in it, and then you take that out and let it dry up. But then you leave the bacon grease in there, and then you put all the shit in, cook it up. And at the end, when it's done, you crumble the bacon on top of it. So, so it's basically I, I'm not a vegetarian. I, I was I was pescatarian for about twenty years, and then oh, yeah. both my wife and I we we fell off the wagon. We were like, "Eh, shall we eat some meat?" Like it, it's terrible, terrible idea. I don't know. In a way, I mean, meat meat is delicious. I freaking love it, but it's just it's. I know it's wrong. Like I, I know I'm going to hell, you know. But um, yeah. so that that's you know a what? lentil soup. You're probably not going to go to hell. You're probably just going to rot in the ground and stay there. So if that's you know what I put, I put money on it that I'm just going to rot on the ground. But oh. um, but the, but that lentil soup that's one that's not for vegetarians. I'm guessing. I'm guess I'm not a vegetarian, but uh, it never crossed my mind. Yeah. But uh, uh, <laughs> but it's fucking good. It's a good soup, you know. May, can the do vegetarians have cheat days? Maybe they could sneak that in. Nobody would know. I, I guess then they're no proper vegetarians. But so. I'm I'm gonna because we're having a lot of technical problems and you know I'm hoping that we'll get to meet in person at some point once all this sure. COVID bullshit is is over and done with. But sure. um, yeah, I, another question somebody asked was like uh, I'll make this the last one and, and let you get on with whatever you're okay. you're busy with. But sure. what well, are you? Um, is there anything coming out soon that you're in? Because I understand you're in a 
like a new cop show that's just come out, like a, a detective yeah. show? Yeah, Pretty Hard Cases, it's called, uh, with um, uh, Andrea Moore. Uh, Adrian Moore, sorry. I always want to say Andrea. Adrian Moore from Orange is the New Black and uh, Meredith from uh, Meredith McNeil from uh, Baroness are the two leads. Uh, and they're fantastic. And uh, there's a lot of great actors on it. Uh, Karen Robinson, Ronnie Rowe. Uh, who the fuck else is in there? Kim Coates is on it later in the season. Um, I'm forgetting. Uh, Dean McDermott. It's a, it's a, it's a great, great cast. Uh, Sherry White and Cassie Cameron wrote it. Um, it's female led. It's female run. It's a, it's a, it's good. It's a good show. And uh, and I play uh, Ad and Adrian's partner, uh, who's uh, who's this who's this bad cop? Maybe maybe he's not. We're not sure. And uh, and she's and she's got to decide whether she trusts him and believes him and. And is going to back his story. So that's that's my plot line on the show, um, and it's it's good. And I'm working on another show now. I said I can't talk about uh, for a while, and uh, hopefully there's uh, we. I'm in these zombies Disney zombies movies for kids. They're like a high school musical series, and hopefully we'll be shooting a third one of those this summer if if the numbers allow it. Um, yeah, it's good. It's all you, good. Your character you know, is I'm, I'm, Zevin in that, right? Yeah, his name's never said. So uh oh. I'm just Zed's dad, the the lead kid, the lead okay. kid's dad, who's a great guy, Milo uh, Mannheim, who's Cameron Mannheim's son, who's uh, who's also become a really good friend. Like they're like a, they're like another family to me. Um but yeah, you know, you know I'm at a good age now. I got 30 years behind me. I got a ton of fucking credits. People know me uh which is good and bad. <laughs> and, uh, you know and, what? Um, you've got more than you've got more than a ton of credits. You've got 163. So that's a ton plus 63. On IMDb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> so I'm fucking old. Also, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you also do writing as well, right? You write some stuff too, right? I, I, you know, I don't really. My IMDb thing says a writer producer, but uh, you know, sometimes when they don't pay you, they just give you a producer credit. <laughs> Okay, that's that's a short story there. I it's like they, they're all. embellishing the, the resume a little bit. Yeah, producing <laughs> Would you is like hard. to do some writing? Uh, I you know I write my column every week, and uh, I don't know, I don't know. You know, I I I, I want to just be good at things. I don't want to, I don't want to be mediocre at things. I I wrote a bunch of plays that's when I was younger, and uh, but they were just okay. So I was like, I don't want to be a a good actor and a mediocre writer. So I've never. So you, sorry to interrupt. You write a column. What, where, where can we find this column? Uh, it's in intermission magazine. Napaholics Anonymous okay. is what it's called. And, uh, oh, and actually, Anonymous. Okay, I'll actually, that actually coming uh, when, when my Facebook suspension is over, uh, <laughs> Feb February 19th or so, uh, I'll be, I uh, will be printing the 200th, uh, edition of Napaholics Anonymous, which is a, an accomplishment I'm proud of. Nice. Okay, Tony, thank you so much for persevering and finally coming on to talk to me live. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it. A lot of people yeah. would have said, fuck You're this. A pain. This is, yeah, pain in the ass. Stop hassling say, I, me. I just said, I said, fuck this guy about a hundred times, but I still, uh, I still have a, a soft spot in my heart still? for you. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate, I, res I respect your perseverance. Uh, Got to be done, it man. A pleasure, it's a pleasure talking to you. We we've had some exchanges online and you seem like a really good guy. Thank you. Well, I know you're a great guy. So, uh, Tony, we'll speak again soon. Uh, so stay okay. in touch and uh, best of okay. luck with everything you're working on. Okay. Cheers, Thanks, man. Buddy. I love Bye. you. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye.